Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to demonstrate how to install Hyper-V onto Windows 11. It's pretty straightforward, but there are a number of gotchas, so let's get to it. The first thing is, this is a brand new machine that I'm working on, and I was unable to get Hyper-V to even install, never mind get an actual machine on it like Windows 11, which is what we're going to demonstrate in just a minute. But let me show you why that was. There are two reasons why when you type Hyper-V, after you've done the install, you don't see Hyper-V Manager. Now, in this case, I do because I've already fixed my problem. If you don't see Hyper-V Manager, you've got one of two issues. One, the hardware doesn't support it. So you've got to go into your BIOS and you've got to enable virtualization. Now, probably enabled by default, but maybe not. So go into the BIOS. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you power the computer down completely. You power it back up and you press either F2 or Escape, depending on your machine. And it could be different with other machines. Anyway, you get the idea here. You need to go find Intel Virtualization Technology or Virtualization Technology. It needs to be enabled. And if it's not, it's not going to work. The second thing you need to make sure is that you're running the right version of uh, Windows. So this is a brand new computer. I don't pay much attention to the version of Windows that I've got because I'm a Microsoft partner and I always just upgrade it. I hadn't done that. Click Start and type in Winver. It's Windows 11 Pro. Prior to my fixing this, I had Windows 11 Home. If you need to upgrade from Home to Pro, it's easy to do. You just change the license key. Let's get on with it. So what you want to do is right click on your start button, go to settings, go to apps, go to optional features, go to the bottom and select more Windows features. And that brings this up. Now I've already installed Hyper-V, but here's a good point. If yours doesn't look exactly like this, in other words, it doesn't have Hyper-V as a category and then two items below it, that means you're almost certainly using Windows Home and not Windows Pro. What you do at this point is click the checkbox to add all of the Hyper-V features, click OK, and it will take really just a few seconds to install, then it will reboot. And if your hardware supports it and you're running a Pro version of Windows 10 or 11, you're on your way. Now let's show you how to install a virtual machine. Click Start and type in Hyper-V Manager. There it is. You'll see I've got nothing here. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. The first is you can click Quick Create and Quick Create will run any of these operating systems for you. Here's the problem. If you do this, it's going to download Windows 11 Enterprise and it's going to come with a whole bunch of Visual Studio stuff. The image size is about 20 gig, so it's pretty serious. Anyway, if that's what you want to do, click the More Options and confirm that you want it running on the network. Uh, which is the default switch, and you can name this anything you want. Okay, I don't want to do that. We're going to go through the more traditional way to create a machine. Click New over here, New Virtual Machine, and we'll roll through this quickly because, again, it's not very challenging. Uh, click Next, call it whatever you'd like, BM1. Where do you want to store the configuration files, the metadata? Eh, it's fine in that location. We'll click Next. Always choose Generation 2. Uh, generation 1 has limitations that you don't want to deal with. Uh, unless you really have to, you're running, you know, server 2008 or Windows 7 or something. Okay, let's click next. Startup memory. Now my machine has 16 gig of RAM, so 4 gig is fine. If you're limited on memory, set that down to 2048. Used dynamic memory should be used, should be checked on, and it is by default. And what that does is allow the amount of memory to float depending on what the virtual machine wants to do. But it will not overwhelm your physical machine. So anyway, I'm going to leave it like that. Click next. Uh, yes, I would like this connected to the default switch. The default switch is connected to the internet, by the way. If you don't really understand that, don't worry about it. It'll make sense as soon as we get through this. Create a virtual disk. Uh, what would you like to call it? Well, I'm going to call it Windows 11 VM1. VHDX is Microsoft's uh, proprietary format. The X just means it's the latest generation. And how large would you like it to be? Well, I would like it to be 127 gig because it's going to be dynamic. See, dynamically expanding, what that means is that it's going to start out with just the bare minimum. So it'll probably be something like, oh, five or six gig to start with. And it will expand as needed up to 127 gig. So that's good for me. And this location is also just fine for me. I'm going to click next. Installation options. Where are you going to get the operating system from? Well, go to your browser and type in download 
Windows 11 and you will get the Windows Media Creation Tool, which you don't actually need. There's a better way to go, which I'll show you here. So click there and that will take you to the Installation Assistant, which lets you install it in this machine. Not what you want. Creating Installation Media. That can create an ISO, but why bother? Because you can just download it directly. So I'm going to select Download here and I'm going to click Download and it will take a second to figure out what it wants. So what language do I want? I would like mine in English US. I click Confirm and that'll create a lovely ISO. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to bother to click on this, but if I did, it would pull it down right away. Okay, let's get rid of that. And let's go back here. I already have the ISO downloaded, so click Browse. There's the ISO that I downloaded and click Next. And does all of that look right? Yep. And you think it's creating the machine, we're good. No, it's just creating the metadata about the machine. So what we want to do is go into settings and check a couple of things. In particular, it doesn't ask us how many processors to use. So my machine has 20 cores and um, I don't want to use more than say six of them on this one. I also don't want to even use 100% of those six. So I'm going to set that to 90. And in case I have additional virtual machines, this particular one is not very important. So I'm going to set it to 75% weight. That just means that if two virtual machines get in conflict, which one gets more, you know, more juice behind it? Well, not this one is what I'm saying there. Uh, another thing to check is the integration services. I'm going to check all of these services on. And the last thing we're going to do is automatic start action. What to do when this machine uh, power, when the physical machine powers up? Nothing. I do not want this machine to restart, this virtual machine to restart automatically. Okay, click OK. And let's right click and start. We can just double click on it here and it'll bring it up and it'll start installing. So yep, we just press the space bar to get it to install. And I'm just gonna click through this quickly. I don't have a product key. I actually do, but I'm not going to use it because I'm showing you how to do it. And this one lets you make this Windows 11 Pro. And it's only asking us this because I didn't enter a license key. If I had a license key, it would not ask us this. Okay, I'm click next. And boo, that's come up with this PC can't run Windows 11, doesn't meet the minimum requirements. Damn it, right, I forgot one other thing. So let's get out of this. And yes, I want to quit. We just want to shut this thing down. So, okay, let's just power this thing off. Turn off, yeah. Because I forgot to turn on the trusted platform module, which is required for Windows 11. So let's go back into settings and go to security, I believe, right there. There it is. And enable secure boot is enabled. And here's the big one, enable the TPM. Okay, let's start this again. Start, double click, and this will come up quickly. Yep, press the space bar. There it goes. And next, and install now. And there we go. This way I can choose the version I want. Let's choose Windows Home. Oh, by the way, actually this will run forever. It will not, uh, it will not shut down, at least not under the current settings that Microsoft has. Go to custom, sure, uh, unallocated space. There we go. There you go, this is going to run. I'm not going to waste your time waiting for this to install. We'll be back in just a second. Another oddity, sometimes when you change resolution, this happens. And so what you need to do is click this little icon up here that changes it to a basic session. Just changes the way it interfaces. There it is. Now you can press Control Delete, sign in, and we're good. So we'll build a profile and everything's happy. Look at that. First thing I like to do is I get rid of this a very annoying toolbar in the middle because I don't like things that are bouncing around. I like it to be in one place. There it is. So that's much happier. If you like this video, hey, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like, big thumbs up, uh, subscribe's always appreciated, and you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca, www.urtech.ca, uh, or you can just leave a comment in the in the comment section below, and if we don't get back to you, somebody else will. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.